Is it allowed for someone who got into an accident to take the money compensation which comes from the insurance company? It is allowed, is it allowed, sorry, to take the compensation from the insurance company after an accident? Um, this issue, Ikhwani, it requires some discussion. It requires some discussion. And I would not like to go into it today, in fact. Maybe, inshallah, when we meet again, we'll discuss that in detail, the issue of insurance. But briefly, briefly, the rule which every scholar in Islam has agreed to is that insurance is haram. Insurance is haram. Why is it haram? It's because insurance is based on uncertainty. It's based on uncertainty. And in it is oppression. In it is oppression. For those of you who came last year or year before when we studied the Islamic principles, the fiqh of economics, business and money in Islam, we said in Islam, all of this is based on two main principles. Number one, ar rahma masi. Everything in Islam is based on rahma masi. Anything which has the opposite, which is oppression, is haram. That is a simple principle for everything. Even to an animal, oppressing an animal is haram. Oppressing a kafir is haram. You understand? So even business dealings where there's oppression, it is haram. Any business dealing where there's oppression. When not everybody gets that you right. You understand? Number one is mercy. And number two, it has to be fair. It has to be fair to everybody. There has to be mutual consent. So in Islam, the Prophet وسلم, he forbade al-gharar. Everything which is gharar. Gharar means uncertainty, unknown. So a good example to give bay'u al-gharar is for someone to come to me. Abdurrahim comes to me and says, Sheikh, I sell you the fish which is in the ocean for $20. Is that halal or haram? What do you guys think? Huh? It, it cannot be halal. Why? Because number one, the chance is, will he get the fish or not? That's the thing. You might say it's a whole lake, there must be a fish. Okay, but will he get it or not? Number two, what is the fish which he's going to sell me? He's going to bring me a little small tadpole like that, a goldfish and for $20. Or is going to bring me a whole humongous shark for $20? Is it going to be edible, meaning fish you can eat, or is it going to be poisonous? You understand, all these factors are unknown. You don't deal with business which has uncertainty in Islam. Simple as that. Simple as that. Insurance is based on that principle. All of us understand how insurance works, right? You pay money. In case something happens, huh? We will take care of you. It's your car, it's your house, it's your business, whatever it is. In case something happens, we will refund you. We will take care of you. To our discretion, by the way. I think all of us know that. The way the insurance companies work. They will make sure if they can find any loophole not to give you money, they will take care of that, right or wrong. In Islam, this is wrong. So what if nothing happens to me and I'm paying $250, $200 every month? That is a whole lot of money. After in one year, you're paying how much? Do the math. 200 multiplied by 12. That's $2,400. What happens to my money and nothing happened to me? Islamically, that is your money. Allah says, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ do not consume the wealth of each other of yours uh, in invalid ways. The Prophet sallallahu said, لا يحل مال امرئ مسلم إلا من طيب نفسه 
the wealth of any other person is haram until he gives his given choice. So insurance is haram based on that. Islamically, they're supposed to give you back your money because nothing happened. If insurance worked like that, yeah, they may charge your service fee because they're doing papers of yours and whatnot, okay. But if nothing happened, okay, this is your money back. That will be halal. But all of us know, I don't know if all of you know, but insurance companies are one of the backbones of these kind of capitalistic societies. They're the main thing of eating other people's wealth, insurance companies. They are the major players of these kind of economies. They cannot fall, because if they fall, all these economies fall. So, insurance is haram because of that. This is something we have to understand. So, so why do we deal with insurance then? Because we have no choice. You can't drive. They have made it mandatory. So, you as a Muslim, when you have no choice in something, you do what is least. It is the concept of eating the dead meat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you, the maita, dead meat is haram. Except though if, illa maturirtum, ilayhi, except what? You have no choice, you're going to die. Faman iddurra, ghayra baghin wala aadin. The one who's forced to have to eat that meat, you're somewhere, there's nothing, you're going to die. Allah says you can eat from that dead meat without passing the limits. And if you have no choice, you just eat enough to keep you alive. You don't feast on that. You don't eat to enjoy it. You understand? We deal with insurance like that. We deal with banks like that. There's no choice. You want a job, they have to pay you through payroll. It has to come through the bank. You deal with the bank like that. Otherwise, it's an institution of riba. You don't deal with it if you have a choice. So you as a Muslim, you take the minimum insurance you can get. It's what you call third party. You don't go into it, delving into it, you know, um, being, um, enjoying it, if that's the right word. No. You do what is bare minimum. You understand? So there's no life insurance in Islam. That is haram. Haram, because there's no need for that. To a certain extent, uh, that is good. To a certain extent, the renting today, they make it mandatory for you to get insurance for the house, right? Some, some places. You have no choice. Are you going to stay, live outside with your family? You have to get a place and pay the bare minimum because that's the condition of getting a place in this kind of society. You understand? That is the idea. So the scholars of Islam, they said then, so when you get into an accident and the compensation comes, you as a Muslim, you only take what you have given. You understand me? So you know that I have paid this company up until today X amount of money. When the compensation comes, if it's less than X, that is halal for you. That is like you're taking back your own money. If the compensation is more than X, then most of the scholars of Islam, they say what? That is not your money. That is basically riba. Because insurance companies, just like banks, they take your money and they invest it. If you didn't know that, 90% of your money in the bank is invested. Is invested. And mostly, I can boldly say that in ways which are haram. It's an institution of interest, riba, you think is going to go into halal business? So you take compensation which is just as much as you have paid. Now I'm saying 